Hello and welcome to another in-between episode of Modular in a Week. Uh, so no project today, I am rearranging my rack uh, mainly because of two things. This middle shelf has been uh, power managed by this. So this is one, two, three, four of the first power supplies, the small power supplies, PSU 05 if you've bought these. Uh, that has been in in this rack shelf together with these arrays of extra uh, capacitors to bump up the uh, capacitance uh, so and remove some of the ripple that these had because the capacitors are so small uh, so I'm doing this I'm changing with this one so this is just a power supply 2 PSU 2 and a Eurac uh, that I've placed along like this the reason why I'm doing this also is because this is a new module I am working on the POW so a power strip basically uh, which with a connection to the, the power rail and a connection to the AC power I get a on off switch and I also get the indication that I got the correct plus minus and 5 volts plus minus 12 volts and 5 volts I also have a USB uh, power output so if I want to add my um, my beat step or, or key step uh, I can do that without having to find another uh, source of USB power and because I do try out a lot of uh, modules and instead of having like this having a power cable hanging out of the uh, rack all the time I actually have a power connector here that is supposed to be at the front panel like so and then I can just plug whatever I'm testing in there and have it all filled with modules and here's just a bunch of modules I have removed uh, from that one and just as a coincidence like so many times before as I sit here working with my power panel and rearranging my uh, my this shelf for better power I get a uh, 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 an email from someone called Leonard Kreutzer and who says he's been making measurements with uh, my power supply uh, or uh, done simulations with that to fig um, to figure out the how much power you can get out of this without getting a ripple and it's not much uh, because one thing is I now I up the capacitors to 4700 which really helped a lot because then the the uh, regulators have way more power to work with but the really big ones uh, like the uh, frequency central one I think I have 10,000 uh, microfarad uh, to work with also I've said that you can use AC power from 12 volts and up and that's because I know that a 12 volt AC adapter probably gives out 15 or 16 volts something like that um, but because uh, and I'll uh, I'll write the whole uh, letter in the um, in the description so you can read all, all, all his uh, all his explanations for this but the thing is that there's a uh, there are diodes that has a voltage drop on them so that lowers the voltage drop a bit uh, and then I'm just gonna turn that off um, and then the voltage regulators need a few more volts than the actual 12 volts to regulate down to of course and because it's AC voltage you don't have 12 volts all the time 
Um, so that means um, that basically what he's saying is that uh, you would get l way less ripple if you use a more powerful AC adapter like 15 or 18 volts. Uh, I say that these should probably, I've talked a lot about halogen lights, uh, AC voltage, so up to 24 voltage AC these should be able to uh, handle. Uh, I wouldn't go much higher than that though. Also very important to have cooling fins uh, if you are going to use these for very very high uh, amps uh, usage. Uh, so the reason that it's usually working is because my DIY modules isn't taking that much power. Um, it's, I have noticed that the, the really power hungry ones is the one with a lot of LEDs. That is a, one of those things that really take a lot of power. Uh, so while doing this I'm going to um, up the AC adapter to a 15 or 18 volts. Let's, I'm going to see what I have lying around uh, to get better voltage or better less ripple out again always trying to find the ripple uh, so let's I'm gonna show his uh, graphs and we can talk a bit more about that uh, because he sent graphs as well showing uh, the the difference between the two, uh, few voltages so let's go and do that all right so here's the mail from uh, Leonard and I will uh, put this in the description or in the comments. It's a really good read. Uh, I'll make sure that you can all read it. He talks about his findings and how he did to do his findings um, uh, and his solution. My solution for this was easy. Use a 15 volt or 18 volt transformer. Uh, and that's, he talks about the voltage drops of the diodes and then another two volts uh, of uh, extra that the regulator needs to work properly so um, yeah we lose a lot of voltage uh, in the when it's working and then he also says that my self-built modules are not that power hungry uh, and that is probably why I and most of you have no problems with these simple uh, power supplies so here's the graph Let's see, what did he write? The blue curve is the voltage at the caps before the regulator and green after the regulator. Uh, left side shows 12 volt AC with half amp load and one amp load. The right side so shows the same load but only with 15 volt AC, right? So that means that we have the, the blue is the input of the uh, the AC input and then we have so this is at a half amp load and this one is at one amp load so this means that we actually don't really get up to 12 volts uh, when we have uh, when we have a half amp load and definitely not when we have a one amp load by just Add, adding a bigger transformer 12 volt AC we see here that we quite quickly get a stable 12 volt here over time and the same with one amp load as well uh, so upping the AC voltage 3 volts seems to make a big difference so that is very good knowledge to have when doing uh, power supplies. So keep that in mind if you have a 15 volt AC or 18 volt use that instead and you will get much nicer uh, voltages even when you use bigger power hungry modules. And also uh, very important that you use cooling fins. And then as I've talked about also, he came back 
um, with some more information. Um, so the 4,700 microfarad capacitors I have should be fine up to a half uh, amp uh, ripple free. Uh, so if we want to go higher than half an amp, then we might need to add another 4,700 microfarad or even more, go above 10,000 microfarad, like the frequency central one. And then of course he talks about cooling fins. This was really interesting. Did you like this? I knew that the 7812 uh, is connected to ground on the back on the plane that it, where you connect the cooling fin. But did you know that the 7912 is the cooling fin of the 7912 is connected to voltage input? So if you put these two to the same heatsink and you don't insulate them, then they will actually ground each other or short each other. So that's not good at all. Um, luckily, I've put in, in my power supply, I've put them on opposite sides, so it would be really difficult to use the same uh, cooling fin for both of them. But it's still uh, interesting and important information to have. So have that in mind as well. And with that, uh, I hope that you all, uh, along with me, have learned some new things about power supplies. Um, I think it's really interesting, the things he says and the way he explains it. Um, so, technically what that means, I guess I have to make another power supply. Uh, especially when we get into the Arduino stuff, we are going to need a lot of amps to uh, to drive all the twinkly lights, the LEDs that we're going to use, because you have to have LEDs when you work with uh, Arduinos, right? Uh, yeah, so again, thank you very much to Leonard Kreutzer, who uh, taught me a bit more about power and modular power, and I hope that you also learned something from that. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna work with this one. It works fine in my current setup. Uh, so I have one for each row uh, and with my uh, homemade uh, modules, doesn't seem to be a problem yet. And if it is, I'll just up the, amp, up the input vo AC voltage. So yeah. Thank you for watching. See you next time for uh, another episode of uh, distortion kind effects. Take care. Bye.